it is my great pleasure uh, this afternoon to introduce our luncheon keynote speaker, Chairman Dan Elliott from the Surface Transportation Board. Uh, I am personally just delighted that he is here for two reasons. Number one, uh, as chairman of the Surface Transportation Board, uh, he is someone who is at the very nexus of the regulatory community, the legislative community, uh, the shipper community, the rail industry, uh, the administration itself. And the metaphor that had popped into my mind was that he's in the eye of the storm. And of course, the eye of the storm is an area where, despite the storm being all around, is very calm. And I'm not sure being in the eye of the storm actually, actually captures where he is. He may be actually in the storm, not in the eye of the storm. But we had dinner last night, uh, and it was, a, it was a great treat for me to have dinner with him. And I will say that what I observed is that he probably is, in a sense, in the eye of the storm. He is a person that, uh, that seems to have a very calm uh, presence about him and a clear-eyed uh, presence about the industry. And I'm sure that reflects both on his own activities at the STB and for the institution itself and, the, uh, and to the betterment of the institution. So we're delighted to have him uh, as a leading uh, uh, policymaker in this country at the Service Transportation Board. Uh, we are also, and I, this is a little more selfish, but I'm also delighted uh, to have him here for what it his organization being here represents to us. Uh, at Georgetown, we pride ourselves on being able to play a convening role uh, among the nation's constituents in a variety of industries and a variety of different economic policy issues. Uh, in the rail industry, uh, there are many constituencies. Uh, we could pretty easily get together a group of academics and just talk amongst ourselves. But we think it is a much richer discussion uh, for having uh, the presence of the STB and we really appreciate the, the fact that the regulatory community is here. I saw uh, uh, Deb Miller here also, and other people from the STB, other people from the administration, people from the embassies, and, and from a variety of areas. So we are especially pleased to have your presence here because what it signals is, is a willingness to have a wonderful dialogue that's going to make us all better. Please help me welcome Chairman Elliott. Uh, thank you very much, John. Um, you know, I, I, I thought, you know, when I first took this position that I was in uh, a bit of a hurricane. Um, but recently, about a year and a half ago, I got married. And as a result, I've become the father to two teenage boys. And uh, I went from a single guy uh, sitting on the couch on the weekends watching uh, football games to uh, taking care of two teenage boys. So now I really know what a, a hurricane feels like. But uh, they've actually been a wonderful addition to my life. And uh, you know, nothing, nothing could make me happier than being in their lives. So um, first of all, I'd, I'd just like to say, you know, with respect to your comments, uh, it's a true honor to be here today. Um, I grew up in this industry professionally, more or less. Uh, I worked uh, for the United Transportation Union as a litigator for 16 years, and then I came uh, to the STB. So uh, to be here at a great university like Georgetown, um, speaking in front of all these uh, uh, leaders of the industry is, is quite an honor. And uh, it really uh, means a lot to me uh, to be here speaking today. I can still remember back when I was a young attorney, uh, about 32 years old, and uh, that's about 20-something years ago. And uh, standing before the ICC, pre presenting my first argument, I had a total of two minutes to make my point. And uh, I was shaking pretty hard the whole time, so I'm not sure if I ever made my point. But um, it is one of my fondest memories uh, standing up there before uh, the ICC. And, and to be in the position I'm in today is, is, is really great. Um, also, with respect to uh, the colloquium, and uh, also the fantastic uh, compendium that you put together, Amanda put together. Um, you know, I just want to say how important that is to us as regulators. Um, you know, when I came to the agency, um, I looked uh, at many management books and, and ways to do things. And, and one of the things that came across my mind was to have a group of economists kind of studying issues relative to the uh, freight industry and the economic issues uh, that come before us. 
And of course, uh, you follow the news of the last seven years. The budgets do not allow for that to occur. I mean, we just have enough staff to get our docket uh, clear um, as effectively as we can. So to have a group like yourself um, out there doing wonderful things and making uh, studies about uh, important issues on railroading is fantastic uh, for everyone involved. I think it's fantastic for the railroads, shippers, uh, the regulators, and for the general public. So I want to thank you for doing that. I think it's an incredibly important thing for you to take on. Um, and it's uh, you know just very flattering. I think that you chose the railroad industry uh, to, to take that uh, kind of difficult project on. So thank you very much for doing that. Uh, the agency itself, um, we've been doing a lot of our own uh, type of things with respect to um, economic studies. We had a, a group called InterVistas uh, take a look at some alternatives to our rate case processes. Uh, so they're in the process of putting out a report right now. Uh, so we had an, in, it was viewed as an independent study. Uh, we wanted to see what somebody uh, like yourselves, somebody from the outside thought about how we do things at the board. And so that'll be something that you can look forward to uh, that will be put out to the public, uh, hopefully in the near future. Uh, it's also part of the uh, Reauthorization Act that was just put in place uh, in December of last year that we have to put out a report. So um, we will have that report out uh, within the time limit set forth uh, in that act. So we're looking forward to that report and I think it'll be something interesting for your group to look at. In fact, I think some of the things that were in your uh, papers uh, related directly to that report. So it should be a, a good thing for you to look at as, as well as the board and the public. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Also, all of you are familiar with the uh, TRB report that was put out that was sanctioned by Congress, paid for by Congress. Um, we uh, greatly enjoyed that work product. Uh, once again, we don't often get, uh, you know, kind of an independent view of what we do at the agency. And I viewed what they did at the TRB as a great piece of work, and it was very interesting for me to read. And uh, I've enjoyed very much uh, looking at possibilities of ways we can use uh, things in that report at the same time as referenced by uh, the, the individuals that wrote the report. A lot, some of those things may require statutory change, but at the same time, uh, there are a few things in there that I found to be uh, very interesting, like the benchmarking tool I thought was 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 interesting thing to take a look at. Um, so uh, once again, um, you know, a group of uh, people from academia uh, did wonderful work, and that rises up to the regulator where it becomes very practical and uh, one day could be used as, as part of uh, the regulatory scheme. So um, what you're doing is, once again, uh, fantastic. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we're doing numerous uh, things at the agency, which uh, uh, will relate, I think, to some of the things that you've been looking at as far as your studies. Uh, one of the things that we recently did, um, we put out a uh, notice of proposed rulemaking with respect to revocation of certain uh, exemptions with respect to commodities. So we put out a notice of proposed rulemaking with respect to three commodities, um, broken stone, uh, riprap, uh, hydraulic cement is number two, and uh, iron and steel products, including coke, um, I believe, from iron ore. So we're, we're taking a look at um, bringing a few commodities back in um, uh, to the regulatory purview of the agency. Um, and that is out for comment right now. And we're curious to hear what people have to say um, about that notice of proposed rulemaking. I can imagine what a few people, uh, p few people in here will say about it. But um, at the same time, uh, we are uh, excited to get the comments on that, that matter going forward. Uh, also, uh, many of you um, are familiar with the case that was filed by uh, Knit League, one of the uh, shipper trade associations, uh, with respect to reciprocal switching. Uh, that's, that's been at the agency for quite some time, and uh, we anticipate putting something out on that, hopefully this month. Um, you know, we, we try our hardest to get things out, but uh, it is a board, so we have to all come together and at least have two votes to get it done. Um, but we're working very hard on getting something out with respect, uh, on, with respect to reciprocal switching here in the near future. 
in addition, we've been working on revenue adequacy. Um, we've been taking a look at, uh, since the railroads have been approaching um, towards numbers in our, our, we take an annual view of revenue ad adequacy and the railroads have been starting to hit that number. In the past, they had not been hitting that number. And uh, so we've been taking a look at how that might impact uh, the way we regulate. Uh, we had a huge proceeding on that and we anticipate uh, doing something on that as well, putting out some kind of uh, order uh, in uh, near the end of the year as well. Um, in addition, um, we have one other proceeding uh, which we re refer to as the grain regulatory proceeding. Um, for those of you who do not follow our docket, we really haven't had a grain case in over, I think, about 30 years. And uh, there's a lot of frustration out there that there is not enough access to the agency in our rate case uh, process, that it's too complex for smaller shippers. And uh, so we decided to take that on and take a look at that. And we're also going to hopefully have something out on that as well near the end of the year. So um, we are working on some very uh, significant uh, things as far as, as a, being a regulator. Uh, and um, you know, just one thing, I, we're not looking to make any huge sea changes but at the same time, um, you know, where we see uh, some, some cracks in the way we regulate, we'd like to uh, seal them up and make them more effective. Um, but we don't want to do anything drastic. We don't want to go back to where we were, um, where you saw that uh, locomotive falling off the tracks um, because the infrastructure hadn't been uh, kept up. So uh, that, that's, you know, we're very aware of that as regulators. And we know how important the rail industry is to the country, uh, to the shippers. We all want the same thing. We want a healthy rail industry. Um, we can fight about all the other stuff uh, in, at, you know, at the agency, but uh, a, a strong rail, rail industry is good for our country and good for everyone. Uh, in addition, uh, there was some mention uh, uh, of mergers. Uh, we did have a, uh, a merger uh, rumbling, uh, which became actually a formal case before us. Uh, some uh, CP brought a petition for a declaratory order about their voting trust. So you heard a considerable amount about voting trust. Uh, that came before us. The uh, comments that came back on that um, were strongly in opposition to the voting trusts that were opposed. And CP, uh, I don't know what uh, their thinking was when they pulled it out, but um, they, they did pull it back, so we did not have to rule on that. Um, I know that uh, earlier it was noted that there had been um, numerous voting trusts in the uh, STB and ICC history that had all been approved, um, but that voting trust itself, um, just to distinguish it, was very unique uh, in the way it was set up. And in that instance, uh, the, the purchaser, the CEO, was going to go over to the a company that was being acquired and run the agency at the time, I mean, run the, the railroad. And uh, so that was very unique and uh, it would have had to, we would have had to take a very close look at that and that's why we did put it out uh, and seek comments. Um, and I think you probably got a good sense of what Justice's comments were from the earlier presentation. Um, so uh, also we uh, just put out a new um, order a uh, notice of proposed rule making with respect to data collection. Uh, many of you uh, recall the recent uh, service crisis that we had in 2013, 2014, where the network just got bogged down. There was just too much traffic. Uh, we had a tough winter. Um, and I think, admittedly, some of the railroads said that they weren't quite ready uh, for the amount of traffic that came on that quickly. Uh, there was a lot of stuff going on with uh, the petroleum up in North Dakota, uh, bumper crop in that area as well. So um, the system got bogged down. And as you know, it's a network. And as a result, the whole entire network started getting bogged down. And um, so as a result, we uh, started asking the railroads for information um, so we could keep an, a closer eye on uh, service and uh, their day-to-day -day, uh, operations. And uh, we've uh, taken, uh, put out a notice of proposed, right, proposed rulemaking to make that final. Um, so we are also. Uh, seeking comments in that proceeding as well. Um, so, so we're doing quite a bit at the agency, um, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention um, 
the probably one of our biggest priorities at the present time. It sounds like we have a lot of big priorities, um, including two large rate cases that are uh, presently uh, before the agency. But one of the uh, biggest priorities and my biggest priority right now, um, not just because Patrick's in the audience, uh, but uh, the uh, Reauthorization Act and the implementation of it itself. Um, so recently in December uh, of 2015, uh, Congress saw fit to pass a uh, Reauthorization Act. The STB had, had not been reauthorized since 1996 when it was originated. Um, so for us, that was a very big deal uh, to have legislation which related to us. And it made some uh, fairly uh, significant changes and I think very positive changes to our agency. And uh, I'll kind of go through uh, those changes in the legislation itself and kind of fill you in on where we stand uh, with that act. Uh, all in all, I can say it is a priority and uh, it is going very well, the implementation itself. I think we're, uh, staff is very focused on it and uh, as are all the board members, um, this has been a group effort. Uh, Deb Miller's over here and Begaman and myself have all been working very hard uh, to make sure that that gets implemented in a timely manner and uh, so far, so good, I'm very proud to say. Um, first of all, uh, what the STB Reauthorization Act did was uh, we're a three-member board right now, uh, and that uh, the act itself moved that to five members. Uh, we remain at three members, and uh, when Congress uh, sees fit, uh, well, actually, first the president has to nominate somebody, and then the Congress has to, uh, Senate has to confirm someone. Um, so. You know, I, I, I can't really guess uh, when any of that is going to transpire um, as far as having five members. Uh, one positive thing about having five members as opposed to three, um, the Sunshine Act right now prohibits two of us from talking to each other um, about cases, about pending matters. And as a result of having five, uh, two members can actually talk to each other and discuss a case because that wouldn't be an actual majority of the board. So that's a very positive thing and I look forward to uh, uh, actually having the ability to uh, discuss a case with a fellow board member. Um, relevant to that, uh, also in Section 5 of the Act, uh, the uh, Congress saw uh, uh, in its wisdom, which I think was very wise, uh, was to allow the board members to come together either as uh, three of us or two of us and have a meeting about a pending matter as long as the general counsel is in the room taking notes and then a subsequent report is put out. Uh, we've had about four of those meetings, Section 5 meetings to date. Uh, several of them have been about um, things in the, in the Reauthorization Act, uh, also on the data reporting. And uh, so it's been a very effective tool. And uh, I do want to thank Congress for the ability uh, to sit across the table from each other and be able to talk to each other and bypass uh, sometimes what turns into a game of telephone because you have to tell your chief of staff, they have to talk to their chief of staff, and then it can kind of get, some of the interpretation can get lost. So being able to look at each other and talk face to face has been um, very helpful to me. And uh, I believe the other members uh, are in agreement on that. Um, also, it made the agency fully independent. Uh, we had been administratively housed within the Department of Transportation, and now we are completely independent. Um, our history is as an independent agency, and as STB, we were decisionally independent. Um, but I think it gives us more freedom uh, to act just by being totally independent, and it doesn't really put us necessarily under anybody's purview. Uh, making the transition um, from being administratively housed within the DOT to being completely independent hasn't been entirely easy, but um, we are making a lot of progress. Department of Transportation has been very cooperative and helpful in making and us helping us make that transition. And I'm very thankful to them because uh, we would be in a very difficult spot uh, with some of these changes that we have to make with respect to IT, contracting, human resources. Uh, so those administrative things we're starting to take on our in our you know own. Uh, house and, and that's not easy to do overnight. So they've been very helpful uh, with respect to that. Uh, in addition, uh, there was a new provision with respect to arbitration. Uh, we had provisions with respect to arbitration, um, but this uh, set uh, higher uh, award uh, limits. Um, so 
I believe, for rate cases. And also, there had not been uh, any arbitration of rate cases. And actually, the STB, while I've been at the board, uh, took a look at arbitration and tried to improve the process. Uh, we haven't had a lot of luck in improving the process. Um, it is voluntary. And uh, we're hoping um, to get more takers. And we're always looking for uh, help from outside and from the comments on ways we can improve and make that uh, something that people want to use. Uh, so we're working ahead on, we put out a notice of a proposed rulemaking in that as well um, in May. And uh, we're looking forward to getting the comments in on that. Uh, we also put out a notice of proposed rulemaking with respect to investigations in May, which was also in the Reauthorization Act. Um, we have been completely complaint-driven, except with respect to uh, on-time performance and Amtrak, and, uh, but we had otherwise been, uh, with respect to our uh, economic regulation of the freights, uh, complaint-driven. And now we do have some investigatory powers. Uh, those investigatory powers um, are a little narrower than you see in some uh, agencies, those have to be of national or regional significance. Um, so I think uh, I, Congress probably had in mind um, that stem from some of the service issues and uh, our inability uh, to have investigatory powers at that time. Um, we did as much as we could uh, during that period of time, but at the same time, it's nice to have another tool in our tool belt. And uh, I don't, their service right now is very good. Uh, the network, unfortunately, is, is there's, there's quite a bit of capacity, which is not uh, you know, the greatest thing uh, for everyone. But at the same time, uh, things are flowing right now. And uh, so I'm not sure what the next investigation will be, but um, I'm sure it's the kind of thing you know when you see it. When you see something of national or regional significance, you know, um, you know that that's something that we have to take a look at. Um, so we have that notice of proposed rulemaking out as well, and we're looking for uh, comments on that. Uh, so there's a lot going on, obviously, at the uh, agency. We also shorten the um, timelines for uh, standalone cost cases, our rate case uh, process. Uh, we basically cut the uh, timeline for those cases in half, um, not quite in half, but uh, very uh, a significant cut in time and, and getting those complete. Um, that is a, a big uh, a challenge for us because there's such complicated cases, especially recently with the chemical companies bringing even more complex cases that uh, we're working very hard to figure out ways uh, to get those cases done uh, in that short amount of time. So um, we did put that in place as an actual rulemaking. Uh, we just implemented the rules because the statute was quite clear on what uh, we needed to do there with respect to our regulations. So that is already in place. Uh, but with a, along with that, um, Congress asked us to take a look at uh, court litigation um, methods that are used to speed up cases and see if we can use those methods to speed up our rate cases or even any other litigation, I think, as well. Um, so we have a proceeding that should come out uh, shortly, uh, I believe, by next week, because it's due June 15th. So I anticipate that getting out uh, in a timely manner. And we also um, had informal meetings before that uh, asking many of the practitioners and stakeholders to come in and discuss with us what uh, they thought we could do um, to improve the SAC case process itself. Um, in addition, we, we heard comments with respect to simplified SAC cases and uh, the three benchmark as well, but um, we thought that was a very useful uh, exercise. Uh, many people took us up on it, came in, and gave us some very uh, interesting ideas. Uh, those, many of those ideas will be reflected uh, in the the decision coming out in the, on the near future. And I look forward to that getting out and hearing more comments uh, from the stakeholders and the public about what we can do to make that process uh, better. Um, I think uh, many of you out there have become frustrated with our SAC case process and are looking for improvements, and, and we are at the board as well. So um, I think that's a very uh, useful forum for improving uh, SAC uh, as well, and we also have the uh, the grain proceeding. We're actually even looking at alternatives to the methods that we have in place. Um, in addition, uh, we have several reports that we uh, submit to Congress. 
um, on a quarterly basis. Uh, those reports include a uh, rate case metrics uh, report. So we, uh, all pending matters, we uh, report on where they stand and the uh, timeline with respect to those. Uh, we have an unfinished regulatory proceeding report. Um, so all the regulatory proceedings, many of the ones that I just mentioned, uh, we put out a report and that tells when the next action will be taken uh, on that unfinished regulatory proceeding. I found that to be uh, a very helpful report. Uh, it keeps us focused. I think it lets the public know when things are coming uh, so they know what to expect. And uh, I think that's been a very, very positive thing. And we've been working um, with Congress, uh, the committees with oversight over us uh, on ways to improve those reports. And I urge you, if there is anything that you see with respect to those reports, that you think can be helpful, um, please let us know because we're uh, trying to be as transparent and helpful to you as possible. Uh, in addition, uh, the last report that we put out are with respect to formal and informal service complaints. Uh, we have a group called the Rail Customer and Public Assistance Group, which handles most of our informal uh, matters. So people call in or email in, and we have a group that handles uh, complaints or questions and uh, so many of those are, are informal service complaints. And so those are generally confidential with respect to the report, unless the person says we can disclose their name. As of yet, no one has disclosed their name, so I don't anticipate that happening. And we're not really pushing uh, that. We'd like to keep that. We don't want to chill uh, a group that has been extremely successful in what they do. They've really uh, done some amazing things. And uh, for any of you uh, stakeholders or any but from the public, if you have a question, they're, they're, the, they're the group to call. And they're very effective and very responsive. Um, so we have the informal and the formal uh, service complaints. So that's anything in our ongoing docket that we have that relates to service. So those are the reports that come out on a quarterly basis. We have a specific uh, page with respect to uh, implementation uh, on our website. Uh, and uh, I urge you to take a look at those reports. And uh, you just click on Reauthorization Act, and you'll get a copy of those reports and any other uh, letters uh, with respect to uh, the Reauthorization Act itself. Um, so I guess as I mentioned, oh, and in addition to those reports, we've actually put out reports on our own on a monthly basis uh, to let everyone know where we stand with respect to implementation itself. So we put that out there uh, to public and to Congress to help them follow what we're doing at the agency. Um, and as I said, I believe it's going very well. Uh, um, so that's, that's basically uh, what's going on at the agency, not much going on. Um, so, uh, you know, I just want to swing back to uh, what you're doing here and just thank you again for what you're doing. This is a, it, it couldn't be a better place to do it. Uh, you can tell by the turnout, it's uh, fantastic. And, uh, you know, we are happy uh, to help you in any way possible because we think what you're doing uh, is a really a great thing. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Uh, I think we have a little time for questions. Uh, yeah. We have a smartphone. Well, I didn't know I could talk that long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Steve Dittmeyer, retired FRA. Mr. Chairman, um, I'm curious. To what do you attribute the STB's continual high ranking on the list of best government agencies to work for? Those are always my favorite questions. Um, I even got one during my confirmation hearing, which I appreciated greatly. Um, I, I do uh, believe that, um, generally speaking, I mean, we're a smaller agency, so it's, it's just a wonderful group of people. Um, they're very, uh, very good at what they do. Um, they're very effective, but they're also, generally speaking, um, just very good people, and uh, they work well together. So I, I do attribute just to the staff that I inherited. Of course, I hired a few uh, of them myself, but at the same time, I, I attribute it to a very dedicated and uh, wonderful group of people. Uh, I, I constantly find myself uh, saying after talking to someone that I see in the hallway, um, which I do make some att uh, attempt to do is to get out and talk to people uh, throughout the office, um, 
but just saying, you know, after I, I talk to them, what a wonderful person, and I just think we're very fortunate. And I think, you know, that feeds on itself. Um, you know, you have good people, so they're going to hire good people generally. So um, it's been uh, a real pleasure uh, just being the chairman of an agency with, su with, with, with such a wonderful staff. Um, and there's a few of them in this room, including two of them that work for me that saw fit to leave because uh, I'm apparently such a tyrant. So I'm on my fifth, <laughs> fifth chief, chief of staff at the present time. <laughs> yes. Hi, uh, Jeff Sloan with the American Chemistry Council. Yes, um, you mentioned the report that is uh, in the works uh, looking at alternative rate case methodologies. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if you've um, thought of next steps for that when that report comes out. Will there be you know, a, a comment period, a hearing, anything like that? Yeah, there, there has certainly been um, some discussion about what the next step should be once that report comes out. And there certainly will be a next step. It won't just go out and fall flat, um, we would like to hear uh, what people think. Um, so in one fashion or another, there will be an opportunity to comment uh, with respect to that report. Um, we have a lot of ongoing proceedings, so um, it may uh, be timely to put it in uh, with something else, but at the same time, there will be an opportunity uh, with respect to that report. Mr. Chairman. So William Clyburn, former vice chair of the Surface Transportation Board. So I was there and voted on this little issue about the merger moratoriums and voting trusts. So as I'm listening to you, you're talking about reauthorization and rate reasonableness and reciprocal switching and revenue adequacy. So you got your own 4R act going on now. <laughs> so my, my question is, what is your philosophy about the Surface Transportation Board in terms of, is it balance? Uh, you're looking for dynamic change, incremental change, status quo because that's a whole lot of things to juggle. So where do you sure. see the direction going in terms of your philosophy? Yeah, I think I, I mentioned earlier, you know, we're not looking uh, to make sea changes. Uh, I think, actually, I, I think I see the individual in the room who gave me that term. Um, but, you know, it's something, you know, that uh, you don't want to make anything, uh, any drastic changes. I mean, I understand what happened in the 80s and why there had to be drastic change and things were... Uh, in dire straits. Uh, we don't have that situation at the present time, but like I said, there are places where we can improve or we should try to improve, and uh, my goal is to make those improvements uh, in as effective way as possible. As a follow-up, do you have a definition for the word drastic? <laughs> drastic? <laughs> I do not. I'll have to look that up in the uh, Webster's. <laughs> Um, I'm sure it's different than yours, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Nate Vomisil, uh, FRA. With regards to uh, exemption cases, in the past, SCB has said that absent specific complaints, they would be treating um, those proceedings as on like a national level. Have the recent legislative changes um, kind of changed your view on that? And if so, how? Um, can you? Repeat that question. I'm, I'm yeah, sorry, I just sorry. wasn't quite following it. Uh, the SCB has said that, that if there weren't specific shippers or groups of shippers that were making specific complaints about the exemptions, that they would treat the exemption proceeding as on a national level, like competition on a national level as opposed to individuals. Um, has, that, has your thinking on that changed at all because of the Reauthorization Act? Um. Not that I'm aware of. I don't think the, I'm not 100% sure I'm, I'm following the question, but um, I don't believe the Reauthorization Act itself really uh, impacted uh, some of those, the, the issue that you're referring to um, that I'm aware of. I think, uh, you know, that was a little bit more specific on, you know, the things that I listed. Uh, so it didn't really weigh into uh, that area of, of the law as much. But it, I, I'd be happy, you know, to talk to you afterwards, just so I can make sure I, I understand exactly what you're asking. Any other questions? Going once. Going twice. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So um, uh, you <clears throat> came to Georgetown University. I noticed, by the way. That uh, Chairman Elliott is a, is a. I mentioned to you that he was calm in the face of of turmoil. 
Uh, I think the, the epitome of that is that if you look at his background, he went to Ohio State as an undergraduate and, or no, I'm sorry, Michigan as an undergraduate and Ohio State as a, uh, for law school, and, and he is not conflicted by that in the least. So I'm gonna try and throw, a, we're gonna try and throw just a little more confusion at him and give him one very small gift, if you'll open this up, please. Okay, thank you very much. So now you'll know where his loyalties are. <laughs>